so welcome to this video series on aptitude presented by mentors for ias in association with bangalore ias academy and nama kpsc so in this particular video as well we will continue with our discussion on problems based on averages problems based on averages so with this particular session i am hoping that any kind of problem that you get based on averages you should be able to solve because i've mentioned earlier pro, uh, averages is such a concept which can be included in other concepts as well we've already discussed problems on averages based on time speed and distance we did that when we solved problems on time speed and distance we've also done problems based on averages in ages so that was in uh, in the beginning of this lecture series where we had solved problems on ages over there also i had solved i did solve some problems if i remember correctly based on averages however this will be our last video based on averages okay so the first question says the average score of a cricketer for 10 matches is 38.9 runs if the average for the first 6 matches is 42 then find the average for the last 4 matches okay so here we have the average score of a cricketer for 10 matches that is 38.9 runs so let me say that let r be the runs the total runs let r be the total runs scored by the cricketer in 10 matches in 10 matches let r be the total number of runs be scored by the cricketer in 10 matches if that is the case then what is the average of the cricketer per match this is nothing but r by 10 where the question already mentions that the average score of the cricketer for 10 matches is 38.9 runs therefore r by 10 is equal to 38.9 r by 10 is equal to 38.9 now the question further says if the average for the first 6 matches is 42 then find the average for the last 4 matches now the question is saying the average for the first 6 matches that is the average from the first match to the 6th match is equal to 42 what is the average from the first sorry what is the average of the last 4 matches that is from the 7th match till the 10th match 7 8 9 and 10 what is the average of the last 4 matches so if the question is saying that the average of the first 6 matches is 42 then can i say when we divide the total runs scored in the first to 6th match that is when we divide the total runs scored in the first 6 matches by 6 that is when we get 42 that is when we get 42 similarly if we want the average of the last four matches what are we supposed to do we have to divide the total runs scored in the last four matches that is from uh, match 7 to match 10 divided by 4 that is when we will get the average of the last four matches therefore we have to find out a now considering this can i say that total runs that is r is equal to the runs scored in the first 6 matches plus the runs scored in last 4 matches yes so runs scored from match 1 to match 6 plus the runs scored from match 7 to match 10 is equal to the total runs now what is r r is nothing but 38.9 into 10 r from this particular equation over here what is r from this particular relation over here what is r r is nothing but 38.9 into 10 it is 389 389 is equal to the runs scored in the first 6 matches what is the run what are the runs scored in 
what is the run scored in the first six matches that is nothing but from this relation over here 42 into 6 42 into 6 plus the run scored in last four matches that is match 7 to match 10 what is this this is nothing but 4 into its average that is 4 a what is the equation asking for the average for last four matches so here we have a linear equation over here with one unknown variable therefore we should be able to determine the value of a we should be able to determine the value of a therefore 4 a is what i will take this to the other side over here it is 389 minus 6 to the 12 uh, 6 for the 24 252 therefore 4a is equal to 9 minus 2 is 7 8 minus 5 is 3 3 minus 2 is 1 therefore average is what nothing but 137 by 4 137 by 4 so if you look at the options it is necessary for me to divide 137 by 4 4 3 is a 12 1 7 4 4 is a 16 1 so we are see here now it is not necessary for me to go any further i get 34 and the only option with 34 is option c therefore the correct answer has to be 34.25 however let me just complete this so the remainder is 1 so here we bring about the decimal point so this becomes 10 4 2 is a 8 remainder is 2 0 5 is a 20 of course it is 34. Point Two five, but it is not necessary for us to wait until we get the remainder as zero because from the options we should be able to determine it has to be thirty four point two five. Therefore, the correct option is option C. The average for the last four matches is thirty four point two five. Now, next question, question number two. Now, the question number, the second question says. <coughs> The average monthly salary of 20 employees in an organization is 1500. If the manager's salary is added, then the average salary increases by rupees 100. What is the manager's monthly salary? So we have to determine the uh, salary per month, monthly salary of the manager. So here from question number two, from the question uh, let me say let s let s be the total salary let s be the total salary of all the 20 employees let s be the total salary of all the 20 employees then if i divide the total salary of all the 20 employees that is s by 20 that is the total number of employees then i should get the average salary of every single employee where the question has already mentioned that the average monthly salary of the 20 employees is nothing but 1500 therefore i should be able to determine the total salary that is nothing but s is equal to 20 into 1500 20 into 1500 now the question further says if the manager's salary is added to the total salary then the average salary increases by 100. So what is the question saying now? If to the total salary I add the manager's salary let me say that M is the manager's salary then the average now I have to divide by 20 plus 1. Why? Because we are including the manager. So it is 20 plus 1. Then the average salary will increase by 100. Therefore, it is 1600. So I have to determine the value of M. S, I can substitute S as what? 1500 into 20. So 15 to the S is what? 1500 into 20. 15 to the 30 and 3 zeros, it is 30,000. So substituting SS 30,000 over here, what do we get? We get 30,000 plus M divided by 21 is equal to 1600, is equal to 1600. Therefore, 30,000 plus M is equal to, I am going to multiply 16 and 21. So what do we get here? 0 and 0, 16 ones are 16, so 6 here, 
uh, 16 to the 32, 32 plus 1 is 33. When I multiply 21 into 1600, I get 33,600. Therefore, what is the manager's salary? It is nothing but 33,600 minus 30,000, which is equal to 3,600. Therefore, the correct option is option C. The correct answer is rupees 3,600. That is the manager's monthly salary, rupees 3,600. Question number three. Now, question number three says, in an examination, a pupil's average marks were 63 per paper. In an examination, a pupil's average marks were 63 marks per paper. Now, if he had obtained 20 more marks on his geography paper and 2 more marks on his history paper, his average per paper would have been 65. So, how many papers were there in the examination? How many papers were there in the examination? So, we have to find out the number of papers, number of papers that he has written in his examination. So, let n, let n be the number, let n be the number of papers. Let n be the number of papers that were there in the examination. Now, the question itself says the pupil's average marks were 63. Now, how do we get the average marks per paper? This is nothing but total marks in all the papers, total marks in all the papers divided by the total number of papers. When we divide total marks by the total number of papers, that is when we get the average marks per paper which is 63 as mentioned by the question itself. Now the question further says if he had if he had obtained 20 more marks in geography and two more marks on his history paper his average per paper would have been 65. See now the question is purposely mentioning geography paper, history paper, 20 in geography, 2 in history, only to confuse you. It does not matter if it is geography, history, maths, English. We don't, we don't need what are the subjects. We only want how many subjects. So it does not matter how much extra does he score in each subject. We only want the total extra marks that he scores. So, if the average per paper has to increase to 65, then the total marks have to increase by how many marks? 20 and 2. It, it, see, it could be 20 marks in history and 2 marks in geography. It, it does not matter for us. Okay. What do we want? We only want the total increase. Total increase is how much? Total increase is 20, 2 marks. 20 plus 2. So, if the average has to be 65, then I'm, I'm going to represent total marks as T. I'm going to represent total marks as T. Okay, so here we know that T by N is equal to 63. So in the second case, if the total marks increases by 22, then if we divide this by N, that is total number of uh, subjects, what do we get? We'll get average as 60. We will get average as 65. What, are we, what do we need to find out? N. So what I am going to do is, I am going to substitute T. I am going to take T as 63 N. 63 times N from this relation over here. I am going to substitute T as 63 N in this relation. So what do we get? We get 63 N plus 22 is equal to, I am going to take N to the right hand side. We get 65 N. Therefore, Taking six, sorry, uh, hen, now, now taking 63 n to the other side, what do we get? We get 22 is equal to 65 n minus 63 n. Therefore, 22 is equal to 2 n or n is nothing but 22 by 2, which is equal to 11. Therefore, the number of subjects in the examination is how much? How many? 11 subjects. Correct option? Option D. It is option D. Now moving on to the fourth question. <clears throat> so I, uh, I hope as of now, by now you have uh, uh, a proper understanding of the concept of uh, averages. So what is important is that you should be able to determine the relationship. You should be able to determine the relationship. 
as long as you are able to determine the relationship you should be able to solve all the problems easily so now let us move on to the fourth question over here now the fourth question says the average age of students in a class is 15.8 years the average age of the boys in the class is 16.4 years and that of the girls that is average age of the girls is 15.4 years so what is the ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls in the class so if you not understood the question please pause the video and read the question once again so now we'll start solving the question so here it is saying the average age of students of a class is 15.8 years so i am going to say let t be the total age let t be the total age let t be the total sum of the age of all students okay so it is the total sum of age of all students in the class let t be the total sum of age of all students in the class now i am going to say let b capital b be the number of boys in the class and let g be the number of girls in the class so what are the total number of students in the class total number of students will be b plus g total number of students in the class will be b plus g so going back to the question if the question says the average age of students of a class is 15.8 years then what does this mean when we divide the total sum of the age uh, of all students that is t by the total number of students which is b plus g we get what we get 15.8 we get 15.8 similarly the average age of boys in the class is 16.4 years how do we get the average age of the boys we have to take the total age of all the boys the sum of all the ages the sum of ages of all the boys in the class so let me say tb tb is the total sum of the ages of all the boys in the class when i divide this by the total number of boys we get what we get 16.4 similarly the average age of the girls what is that the total age of the sum of the total uh, uh, the sum of the ages of all the girls divided by the number of girls it will give us how much it will give us 15.4 give us 15.4 what does the question want us to find the question wants us to find the ratio that is b by g b is to g so i hope this is clear now looking at these three relations what is t t is the sum of ages of all students meaning it is the sum of the ages of all the boys t is nothing but the sum of the ages of all the boys what is the sum of the ages of all the boys tb and the sum of the ages of all the girls what is that that is tg so in this relation over here i am going to write t as tb plus tg divided by b plus g is equal to 15.8 now what i will do is i will substitute tb and tg i will substitute tb as what i will substitute tb as 16.4b i am going to take b to the right hand side and i am going to substitute tg as 15.4g i am going to take g to the right hand side so now substituting tb and tg over here what do we get we get 16.4b plus 15.4g divided by b plus g is equal to 15.8 so now taking b plus g to the right hand side over here what do we get we get 16.4b plus 15.4g is equal to 15.8b plus 15.8g now what will i do i will take 15.8b to the left hand side and 15.4g to the right hand side so what am i left with now i am left with 16.4b minus 15.8b is equal to 15.8b minus 15.4g 
So 16.4 minus 15.8 is uh, what? This is nothing but 0.6b equal to 15.8 minus 15.4 is what? 0.4g. 0.4g. This is 0.4g. I am going to write this over here at the top. So what do we have? We have 0.6b is equal to 0.4g or 6b is equal to 4g or what can I write this as? I can write this as b by g is equal to 4 by 6. I am going to take 6 here. I am going to take g here. b by is equal to 4 by 6 or it is equal to 2 by 3. Therefore, the ratio of the number of girls to the number of boys in the class is what? It is 2 is to 3. The correct option is option b. It is option B. So I hope this is clear now. The correct answer is 2 is to 3. Next question, question number 5. Now question number 5 says, <clears throat> in a school with, stu with 600 students, the average age of the boys is 12 years and that of the girls is 11 years. So, if the average age of the school itself is 11 years, 9 months, then the, the number of girls in the school is what? So, we have to determine the number of girls in the school. So, similar to the previous problem, Okay, we will take the same uh, annotations in this particular problem as well. So, what we are going to do is, see, the question is saying the total number of students, the total number of students is equal to 600. The total number of students is equal to 600. Okay, now... The average age of boys is 12 years and that of girls is 11 years. So what I am going to say is, let the number of boys, let the number of boys be B. Let the number of girls be G. Where TB is what? The total sum of the age of all the boys. The total sum of the age of all the boys. Similarly, what is TG? Let TG be the total age, the total sum of the age of all the girls in the class. Then, if the question says the average age of boys is 12 years, what does this mean? When we divide the total sum of the age of all the boys by the total number of boys, we get 12. Similarly, if the question says the average age of the girls is 11 years, this is when we divide the total sum of the age of all the girls by the number of girls, we get 11. We get 11. Similarly, the question is also saying if the average age of the school is 11 years, 9 months, then what is the number of girls? How do we get the average age of the school? Average age of the school is nothing but the total sum of all the ages of all the boys and school that is t divided by the total number of students what is the total number of students the total number of students is nothing but the number of boys plus number of girls so this t is nothing but tb plus tg divided by total number of students is nothing but 600 which is also equal to b plus G, which is also equal to B plus G. Now, this is equal to 11 years and 9 months. Now, how can we represent 9 months? See, 12 months is 1 year. Therefore, 9 months is how many years? Nothing but 9 by 12 or 3 by 4. So, I am going to say it is equal to 11 years plus 3 by 4 years. 11 plus 3 by 4 years. So, these are the relations that we have. These are the relations that we have over here. So, now what I will do is, I will substitute TB as 12B and I will substitute TG as 11G in this relation. 
Okay, so we have twelve b plus eleven g divided by what is b plus g? B plus g is nothing but the total number of students. What is total number of students? Total number of students is nothing but six hundred. So we now have six hundred is equal to eleven plus three by four. Eleven plus three by four. Now we want what? We want the total number of girls. I don't want to find out the total number of boys. I know that b plus g is what six hundred. Therefore, what will I do? I will substitute b as six hundred minus g. I will substitute b as six hundred minus g over here. So what do we get? We get twelve into six hundred minus g plus eleven g divided by six hundred is equal to four elevens are forty four. Forty four plus three is forty seven. Forty seven by four. We get forty seven by four over here. So I'm going to take this over here. Okay. So sorry. I'm going to write. The, I'm going to write this below this line. So <clears throat> opening the bracket, we have twelve into six hundred minus twelve g plus eleven g is equal to six hundred into forty seven by. 600 into 47 by 4. So, 12 into 600, 11 g minus 12 g is minus g is equal to 600 into 47 by 4. I will take g to the other side and I will bring this to the left hand side. What do we get? We get 12 into 600 minus 600 into 47 by 4 is equal to g. I take 600 common out. I have 12 minus 47 by 4 is equal to G. 12 fours are 48. So it is 600 by 4 into 48 minus 47 is equal to G. So what is G? G is nothing but 600 by 4. So if it is 600 by 4, it is 6 into 100 by 4. Uh, so I can write it as 100 by 4 is nothing but 25. So this is nothing but 6 into 25. Uh, 6 25s are 25 fours are 100. Uh, 25 six are is 150. Therefore, the number of girls is what? Number of girls is nothing but 150. Therefore, the correct option is option A. The number of girls in the school is 150. It is 150. So, I hope you've understood this question. If you've understood this, let us move on to the next question. That is question number 6. Let us move on to the next question. That is question number 6. Now, question number 6 says, <clears throat> The total present age of uh, A, B and uh, the total present ages of A, B and C and D is 96 years. Then what is B's present age? Now this is a part of your data sufficiency. This is a part of your data sufficiency. Okay, so we have to determine if it is possible for us to make use of the information contained in the first and the second statements to answer this particular question. That is what is B's present age? So from the question itself, what are we able to determine? The total age of the four individuals that is A plus B plus C plus D is equal to 96 years. The total of the present ages of A plus B plus C and D is 96 years. From the first statement which says the average age of A, B and D is 20 years. What does this mean from the first statement? A plus B plus D divided by 3 is equal to 20. Therefore, A plus B plus D is equal to 60. From the second statement, what do we have? We have C plus D divided by 2 is equal to 25 years. It says the average age of C and D is what? It is 25 years. Therefore, C plus D divided by 2 is 25. Or I can say C plus D is equal to 50. What are we supposed to find out? We are supposed to find out the value of B's present age. So let us see if it is possible. Uh, so let me substitute C plus D as 50 over here. So we have A plus B plus 50 is equal to 96. Therefore, 
a plus b is equal to 96 minus 50 which is equal to 46 which is equal to 46 we now have a plus b is equal to sorry a plus b plus d is equal to 60 now what if i substitute a plus b in this equation this is your first equation this is your second this is your third so now i'm going to substitute now this is our fourth a plus b is 46 i am going to now substitute a plus b as 46 in the second equation so what do we get we get 46 plus b is equal to 60 therefore d is what 60 minus 46 it is nothing but 60 minus 46 uh, it is 14 years it is 14 years therefore the age of d is what it is 14 years if the age of d is 14 years what is c's age c is nothing but 50 minus 14 uh, 50 minus 14 50 minus 10 is 40 40 minus 4 is 36 therefore the age of c is 36 so we are able to determine the age of c and we are able to determine the age of d however from this it is not possible for us to determine the age of b we are able to determine the age of both a and b but only b or only a is not possible from the information which is contained over here you can try whatever we whatever you want whatever relation you want this is the limit the only way it is the only answer that we are able to find is the age of c and d not b or a therefore the information contained in uh, statement 1 and statement 2 is actually insufficient therefore the correct answer is option D both 1 and 2 uh, information contained in both 1 and 2 statements are actually insufficient for us so now let us move on to the next question that is question number 7 question number 7 <coughs> so what does question number 7 say? Question number 7 says the average salary of all the workers in a workshop is rupees 8000. The average salary of 7 technicians is rupees 12000 and the average salary of the rest is rupees 6000. The total number of workers in the workshop is what? What is the total number of workers in the workshop? Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, let <coughs> let n be let n be the total number of employees. Let n be the total number of employees. Or let me just write this. Uh, okay, uh, let let n be the total number of employees let n be the total number of employees uh, i'm going to say let s let s be the total salary let s be the total salary of all the employees that is let s be the total salary of n employees meaning all the employees also we have the average salary of technicians. So I am going to say let T be the total salary. Let T be the total salary of the seven technicians. Of the seven technicians. So this, these are the annotations that I am going to assume for this particular question. Now, if the question says the average salary of all the workers in a workshop is rupees 8000. What does this mean? What is the total salary? S. When you divide the total salary by the total number of employees, that is N, that is when we get the average salary of all the workers, which is rupees 8000. Now, the question goes on to say the average salary of the seven technicians is 12,000. What is the total salary of the seven technicians? I am assuming it to be T. Then, can I say T? divided by 7 because it is 7 technicians the average salary of the technicians will be 12,000 it will be 12,000 the question further says the average salary of the rest of the employees is rupees 6,000 see total salary and total employees their average salary is 8,000 if you only take the technicians that is 7 
their average salary is 12,000. So the rest of the employees, that is non-technicians, their salaries average is 6,000. So if you want the total salary of the non-technicians, how can you get the total salary of the non-technicians? It is nothing but you have to subtract the total salary of the technicians from the total salary of all the employees. That is nothing but S minus T. In order to get the average of the rest of the employees, we have to take the number of we have to take the number of non-technicians. How do we get the number of non-technicians? Nothing but total number of workers minus 7, that is number of technicians. We will get the rest of the employees whose average salary is nothing but rupees 6000. Now what is the question asking for? Question is asking for total number of workers. That is we have to determine the value of n. We have to determine the value of n. So if we have to determine the value of n, what we will do is we will substitute s. What do we substitute s as? We will substitute s as 8000 n. Similarly, we will substitute t as what? We will substitute t as 12000 into 7 in this particular relationship over here. So we have s as 8000 n minus 12000 into 7 is equal to, now I am going to take this to the right hand side, n into 6000 is what? It is 6000 n minus 7 into 6000. So in this particular relation or equation, what I will do is, I will take 6000 n to the left hand side, I will take 12000 into 7 to the right hand side. So what do we get? We get 8000 n minus 6000 n is equal to is equal to 12,000 into 7. So what I will do is I will write 12,000 into 7 as uh, 14 into 6,000 so that I can take 6,000 common out. I am going to write 12,000 into 7 as 14 into 6,000. You will get the same thing. See 12 is what nothing but 6 into 2. I am going to multiply that 2 into 7. 14 into 6,000 minus 7 into 6,000. 8,000 n minus 6,000 n is 2,000 n which is equal to I take 6,000 common out. 14 minus 7. All the zeros get cancelled. 2, 3 is a 6. What are we left with? n is equal to 3 into 14 minus 7. That is nothing but 7 itself. Therefore, n is equal to 7, 3 is a 21. The total number of employees in the uh, workshop is 21. The correct answer is 21. Option B. If you want the rest of the employees, not 21 minus 7, that is 14. That is 14. Therefore, the correct answer is 21. Okay. Let us move on to the next question. Let us move on to the next question. Question number 8. Question number 8. <clears throat> now, question number 8 says, the average weight of 16 boys in a class, the average weight of <coughs> uh, 16 boys in a class is nothing but 50.25 kgs and that of the remaining 8 boys is 45.15 kgs. So find the average weight, find the average weight of all the boys in the class. Now. If you want the average weight of all the boys in the class, then what do you do? You want the total weight. You want the total weight of all the boys. Then you will divide it by the total number of boys. That is when you get the total average. That is when you get the total average. Now, in order for us to get the total weight, how do you get the total weight? See here, the average weight of 16 boys. Average weight of 16 boys is what? The weight of 16 boys is what? 50.25 and the weight of 8 boys, average weight of 8 boys is what? It is nothing but 45.15. What is total weight? Total weight, total weight is nothing but weight of 16 boys plus weight of 8 boys. So what do we get here? We have W16 plus W8 that is weight of 16 boys plus uh, weight of 8 boys divided by the total number of boys that is 6 by 18. 
So what is W16? W16 is nothing but 50.25 into 16. Let me just erase this. Okay, so 50.25 into 16 uh, plus 8 into 45.15 that is W8 that is nothing but 8 into 45.15. This divided by, by total number of boys that is nothing but 24. Now, this is a particular type of question which I want you which I want you to know. This is a type of question where uh, which includes a lot of calculations. Now generally you do not get such questions generally you do not get questions where you do where you have to do a lot of manual questions it is all based on understanding okay so this 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 type of question where you have more of calculations such questions you do not get however let me just solve this particular question so that even if you do get you should be able to i'm not saying you should you'll not be able to because there's nothing but calculations you have to add you have to multiply and you have to divide to get the ultimate answer so here it is nothing but pure calculation which is pure mathematics so here we have to now multiply 50.25 by 16 we have to multiply 16 okay so what do we get here uh, we have uh, 6 5s are 30 over here, 6 2s are 12, it is 15, 6 0 0, 6 5s are again 30. Okay, so we have 5, 2, 0 and 5. So 0, 5 plus 5, 10, we have 4, 0, 5 plus 3, 8, 2 decimal points, so it is 8 not 4. So what do we get here? We get, uh, let me write it here, 8 not 4 plus 8 into 45.15. 45.15 into 8. What do you get? 8 5s are 40. 8 1s are 8 uh, plus 4 is 12. 8 5s are 40, 41. Uh, 8 4s are 32. 32 plus 4 is 36. Okay, two decimal points. So it is here. So we get 361.2 divided by 24. So when we add this, what do you get? You get decimal point 2, 4 plus 1 as. Uh, 5 then 6 uh, 8 plus 3 is 11 so now you have 11,650 uh, 11,065.2 divided by 24 or i am going to write it as 11,060 uh, 11,006 sorry one th you have uh, 1,165.2 i am going to write it as 11,652 divided by 20 so now you have no option but to divide if you want the average weight of all the boys okay so this is not 24 this is actually 240 now <clears throat> i'm assuming see most of this you even though you do have calculations you know even though you have a lot of calculations which are actually involved uh, it is not too much of calculations so i'm hoping that uh, it which it should be divisible by 12 at least it should be divisible by 12 at least because 240 24 is divisible by 12 so what i will do is i will take 11 6 5 2 and i will divide it by 12 i will divide it by 12 so 11 is not divisible so uh, 12 12 10 is 120 so i'll take 12 9 is 12 9 is nothing but 108 uh, 16 8 is 8 we have 85 so 85 uh, 12 5 is 60 is 72 12 7 is 12 7 is we have 84 one remainder 12 of course 12 1 is 12 it is 0 so 12 971 is 11,652 12 20 is 240 so what are we left with we are left with uh, 971 uh, divided by 21 so now we will divide it by 2 uh, 2 4 is 8, 1 carry 7, 2 8 is 16, 1 uh, 2 5 is 10, 1 uh, you will get 1, uh, 5 is 10 and 0 therefore I have this uh, decimal point have to be moved here. Therefore when you divide 971 divided by 20 what do you get? You get uh, 48.55. Therefore, the correct answer or the correct, uh, the average weight of all the boys in the class is what? It is 48.55 kgs. The correct option is 
option C. The correct answer is 48.55. The correct option is 48.55 kgs. So uh, there are three practice questions over here again. So with this particular uh, video or with this, this particular session, we are ending our discussion on problems based on ages. So do try and solve uh, these three questions over here. Uh, so if you do have any doubts, uh, please do write to us in the comment section. The solution for the three practice problems will be posted in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, do follow us for more such videos in the coming uh, videos we'll take up different topics for csat or for your kpac exams thank you